Welcome back into the channel everyone. Today we talk about handheld plasma cutting. Now let me first remind you about a video that we did a little bit of, uh, back is why my plasma cuts suck. Go check that video out if you haven't already seen it. It basically breaks down the three things that make for a good plasma cut. One, good air. A lot of air. You can see that I've got my compressor out there. It's going to make your cuts a lot better if you have a plenty supply of air. Not only that, but it's connecting to something as far as a dry air filter to clean that air. All that air, especially down here in Houston, it's got all the humidity and it's just pulling in all that at atmospheric air into the tank and then through that line, it's going to ruin your consumables a little bit faster if you don't have dry air. That's going to help a lot as well as running the proper consumables for the actual amperage you're running. Now the amperage you're running is going to depend on what thickness of metal you're going to be running. Comparatively speaking to like a CNC machine like the fast cut table I got behind me. All of those things really really go in depth as far as how to really get good clean plasma cuts on your CNC table. If you guys want to see a video on that let me know I'm be more than happy to whip one up for you. That's what we're going to be looking for today with hand cutting only. Now, when I go into cutting what we've got today, which is closer to 16 gauge, 10 gauge, 3 8 plate, and a whole inch thick plate here, I'm basically going to leave this bad boy wide open and we're going to go cut through all of these. Now, I am going to run a respirator, so try to keep our PPE up. Plasma cutting puts off a lot of bad fumes, so we want to try to stay a little bit protected if we can. Wear our gloves, and I've got some T5 shades on my head that I'm going to swap off my regular glasses. Now again, we're going to be cutting some sheet metal today, some 16 gauge and some 10 gauge. You definitely can cut a lot thinner uh, and definitely can cut a lot thicker depending on what plasma cutter you're running. Now again, I've got this Thermacut Extra Fire 85 HD hooked up to single phase power. So I'm going to be able to cut this inch thick stuff. But if I was able to have three phase power, I could probably get even thicker. We're going to start with the 16 gauge. All I like to do is make a little line to follow and I'm going to opt to scribe it. Scribes make a nice, nice easy line to follow. And then we're going to use the drag tip with a bit of a fence. I'm going to show you a, a travel speed example of it too slow versus too fast on both the 16 gauge and the 10 gauge. This is an example of too slow of travel speed. I cut really slow and you're going to notice a lot more dross. Now we have a couple options. We could turn down our plasma cutter to kind of match our travel speed and we might get a little bit cleaner cut. But ultimately we've got to move a lot faster. Some of y'all fabricators are probably cringing because I'm using a square to use for a drag but this is kind of an old crummy square that I'm using. You kind of, as you can see you can kind of have to offset your fence for the hole that you're cutting. Uh, but it does still make a nice square cut, but look at that. That looks so much nastier. So we're going to see how fast we can cut through, and you're going to notice a nice difference because we're able to straight up smoke this 16 gauge. I mean, that was quite obvious. We moved a lot faster, and I think I could have get a little bit more IPMs out of it and still have a nice clean cut. There's basically no dross. My tip for anyone is move as fast as you can, as much as that torch will let you move. Now, this 10 gauge material is roughly twice the thickness of what we just cut as far as that 16 gauge goes. So we shouldn't be able to cut as fast. I'm gonna try to cut as fast as this metal will let me cut, there's going to be one real telltale sign and it's really hard to notice and that's the tail coming out the bottom of this plasma cutter. If you ever notice it's starting to curve, you can sometimes see it a little bit from the top. The, the most noticeable is at the bottom. So that's what I want you all to see first. We're going to start to see where that curve is. Now if I could get the old instant replay from Tyler the editor, You'll notice as I start flying through this sheet metal, I'm trying to see how fast I can move and occasionally you'll see that arc start to kick back and even splash up a little bit to the surface. And again, I was trying to move fast and it was still cutting really nice. Uh, between me and you, cutting sheet metal is not that big a deal. 
I'll be honest with you, I'm not even using the right consumable for this right now, and it's still cutting like a charm. It's when you start getting up into thicker metals that you start seeing a big difference. Now moving on to this 3 8 plate, obviously things are close to three times the thickness of that 10 gauge material that we worked on. Now, most of the time people use these drag tips. I think the drag tips are easy to use for like working on a fence or cutting straight lines, which is, which is good and dandy. The big thing is that you make sure you keep it flat and square. And sometimes that's hard to see. I sometimes opt to use just a machine tip, which is just so that I can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna have to keep a much steadier hand. Uh, I'm gonna actually try to freehand these cuts just to give you a little bit of different example and to really show you some raw, raw action. The electrode right here is 45 to 105 amps. So it's pretty much good for whatever. Now it's got a little bit of pitting on it. I think it's still got plenty of life left, but just for consistency things, I'm gonna put in a new electrode. Again, this one's 45 to 105 amps. So I'm good on that one. Now this machine, like I mentioned before, on single phase power, only goes up to 65. And I've had an 85 on there. That 85 is gonna have a different orifice or hole on the end of it. It's basically like your tips for your oxyacetylene. It's gonna have a bigger or smaller hole. That's gonna give you a different kerf size, right? So kerf is the amount of material that's left or that the uh, plasma cutter is taking away. Same thing for a cutting torch. For now, we're gonna run a 65 amp with the 65 amps that we're running. And we're gonna run a machine tip on here as well. Oops, we gotta put our retainer on here. But anyway, enough talking. Let's cut this 3 8 plate with the right consumables. So the main takeaways that I want you to get from this is again, watching the bottom side of this cut. I'm gauging my travel speed based off what I'm looking down for and making sure it's going straight down. I'm trying to hold my torch straight because I want a square cut. I think that overall that's a pretty good cut. Not too bad at least. I mean, there's not a lot of dross if any. I tried to keep it as square as I could. I was looking straight down that nozzle at the leading edge of my cut. As you get to some thicker plate, maybe you don't have the amperage for it. You can compensate for that with a little bit of 10 or 15 degrees of a push angle. We never really want to drag because I don't want to see that arc want to wander out of my cut or jump out. I'm going to try to make that happen in this example right now. Well, that was kind of an example of it. You'll notice if you go too fast, especially right here at the end, I was trying to go faster and I think it pulled out, got a little evidence of going a little bit too fast. And we'll see that once we get this piece of metal off. Ugh. That's definitely where that cut jumped out. And you can see how gnarly that is. You can also see a little bit of evidence of travel speed issues in the actual cut itself, even though we made it all the way across. We still might have a little bit more dross on it, or you might see that these lines on the edge of your plate where you cut are a little bit of an angle. And that's telling you that if you need to slow down and make sure that they're straight lines. Now that 3 8 plate really wasn't giving me the results that I wanted to show you all as far as the lines. We were still getting through the 3 8 plate too quick, again, because we had dry air, a lot of it, and we have the right consumable for the amperage we're running, which is 65 amps maxing out this extra fire right here on single phase. So we're going to continue that. We got the same 65 amps. We have the same setup as we just used and we're going to make a cut. Now I'm going to start speeding up my cut as I get through this one inch plate. So you can start seeing that little bit of lag in the arc. And again, the thicker the metal, the slower you go. It's just as simple as that.
And I think the worst part about cutting thicker metal is you can really tell when you suck. But if we look at this a little bit better, we got a little bit more dross. Nothing that won't just kind of hammer off. And then this part, I don't know if y'all saw that, but again, that arc bounced right out. The big thing that you all really need to see is you can see right at the bottom of this how that arc wants to tail off. Now, the only things that I can really do to compensate that is maybe slow down a little bit more, but we are already cutting fairly slow. I mean, we still made it through an inch thick plate pretty easily, but we still had to cut really slow and then you saw that get a little bit worse right in here as I tried to start speeding up. And then eventually it was just like, all of a sudden we bounced right out of our cut. Now, this is still pretty good. Now I'm still a little bit human error. It's not 100% straight. And that's the worst part about cutting thick metal is if you're not really square with that arc, it's not cutting right dead straight unless you've got the more power than it needs to cut through thicker stuff. So if you're using a smaller plasma cutter with less amperage on really thick material, you can try to compensate with a little bit of a push but really you're just gonna need a different application unless it just doesn't need to be pretty. But I'm gonna do one more thing to really mess this cut up and it's just one little thing. Now the only thing that I've changed is the nozzle. I've got the same electrode, I've got the same everything. The only thing that I've changed is went from a 65 to an 85 amp nozzle on the inside. Now remember that changes the whole size. Uh, some might think, oh, I've got only 65 amps, it can handle it, it's an 85 amp one. That's not the point. The arc isn't going to be enough for the hole, so it's going to wander a lot more. And no matter what you do, how slow you want to cut, you're not going to get through this thing straight. Yeah, all that arc wanted to do was wander. So we got a little bit more wander in that arc. You can see, especially towards the back, we got a lot more of that and towards the front, we get a lot more of this sloping of the cut. And if we're taking a look down at this way, we can see that it doesn't want to stay on a straight line at all, which isn't helpful if we're trying to keep things square, keep things in line. So I really definitely recommend whatever you're doing when you get to thicker metal is using the appropriate electrode. Ideally for this inch stuff, I would want all 85 amps out of that extra fire because just like on sheet metal, even if I'm moving into plate, I want to move as hot and fast as I can. Now don't get me lying on why that cut looks worse than, <laughs> worse than all of them. If I had to guess, this was the only one on thick metal that I used a fence on. And that's one reason why I don't really like dragging it. I did, again, I had the 65 amps, I had the 65 amp electrode. The only thing I changed was a drag and put a fence on it. The fact that I'm holding it like this, maybe if my hands drop at all, I'm automatically doing that that drag angle, which I don't want. So I'm trying to watch that tip stay square, but it's easier said than done. And that's the big trick to cutting thicker metals is making sure that you're cutting everything nice and square other than if you're not trying to and you just need to hack something off. Look guys, if you take anything away from this at all, I mean, I just max out my machines. I just turn them all the way up and then judge my travel speed. I just start getting a little bit more particular when I start getting to thicker materials. If you're just plasma cutting by hand some sheet metal, just cut it, cut it fast, hot and fast, all the way up. Whereas you start getting to the thicker metals, you need to make sure that you fine tune things as far as your amperage and your electrodes. And then when you get to a CNC table, you really need to pay attention to those things. And that's why I've had to learn all this stuff and I'm trying to dump it all on you guys. I hope you took some value out of this video. Please check out our partners down below. They help us make some of this content. Our friends over there at Thermacut, Abacor Benzel, Cayman Gloves, PIP. They all help us make this content for you guys. I hope you all like it because that's the only reason why we're able to do it in the first place. Thanks for watching.